Black Knight, also known as Tech Bagisha, written and directed by Cho Yui Siok and starring Kim Yo Bin, Song Seong Hyun, and others in key roles, was released on Netflix a few hours ago. The series, which is based on Liu Yu Gyun's webcomic Black Knight or Delivery Knight, portrays a dystopian future in which severe air pollution has wiped out the majority of humanity and left those who remain to rely on skilled delivery drivers in order to survive. As the show finally released on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to discuss if the show is worth your time or not without spoiling it. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The series is a dystopian sci-fi fantasy thriller and is about the Korean peninsula when extreme air pollution in the year of 2071 wiped off all but 1% of the country's original population and transformed the remainder of it into a wasteland. The survivors must wear respirators and depend on the night's specialized delivery drivers to provide them with the resources they need to survive, particularly oxygen that is made from a fictitious element oxenium. A renowned knight by the name of Phi Bae decides to tutor a young kid named Saul who aspires to become a knight like him so that he can realize his ambition in the dark and perilous world in which they reside. This much was clear from the trailer and the official synopsis, now let's talk about how the series actually turned out to be. Well, if you ask me, the series is a decent adaptation of Liu Yogyun's webcomic. The showrunners take us to the dystopian world without wasting a single second and the film jumps into action the second it appears on screen. The adapted screenplay is decent enough, but the story is mostly plot-driven and does not rely on the characters or their journey too much. The characters do not get to a different point of their personality by the end of the series and throughout its runtime their ideology and conviction are never questioned. Only the character Siola, played by Esom, has a proper character arc. She gradually understands the wrongdoings of the government influenced by some corrupt capitalist who wants to run the country with powers bought with money and from questionable works. Kim Woo Bin plays Phi Bait, a legendary delivery man who is portrayed as a beacon of hope among the masses. He helps people in need and carries a hard-boiled face throughout the series. Though his tears and grunts are effective, we don't entirely connect with the character as his struggles were not shown in detail. His mentoring was also briefly explored as he shaped Saul into a soldier of goodness. Still, the conviction or sheer badassery was missing from his character which could have enhanced the series or its storytelling a little bit more. Kang Yo Siuk, who plays Saul, mostly shines in emotional spaces, but when it comes to his heroic side or the times he is supposed to stand up for good, we don't feel the urge to root for him. His past life was briefly explored in the series, however that too fails to connect with us. Though he tries a lot physically, especially in the fighting scenes, but that point after he lingers around like a random side character and has nothing to offer to the sequence of events. By the latter half, he becomes sort of a damsel in distress and needs constant saving. The antagonist of the series, Ryu Siuk, played by Song Seung Hyun, portrays a cutthroat businessman that hates the refugees and their existence. Though the reason were not cleared by the end of season 1, however his portrayal is just and not too over the top. His composer and calmness overshadow the MCs, yet his conviction was lackluster and seemed a bit generic. The writing of the series falters near the midway of its runtime when it steps up from a dystopian political drama to an action-packed spectacle. The quick cuts in those action sequences were tiring to watch as they did not have a sense of direction. It was not clear who is beating whom, the only exception is the qualifying brawl of the first level which was choreographed a little bit better than the rest of the action set pieces. The CGI heavy racing sequence frankly took me out of the vibe the series wanted to set, still it cleared the motivation of the MC and turned out to be a good plot device for future events. This sequence also cleared the motivation of the antagonist and revealed one of his most cunning plans. The cinematography is good and the use of music is decent. At the end of the fourth episode, we could hear Mozart's Lacrimosa when Five Eight checks out the place of a recent calamity. The scene revealed a lot about his character as despite being tough from the outside, Five Eight moans the victims of a heinous plot. 
the visuals are not original and are just like any other Netflix release. However, it stands out in places like the design of the underground or code district which showed us what a live action adaptation of Neon Genesis Evangelion's hidden base would look like. The series is a decent attempt from the makers to adapt the webtoon, the vision of the makers keeps us hooked to the screen and the show has an essence of Mad Max and Arkane attached to it. Still, some of the basics of the universe and technologies are not explained in detail and the mutant plot seems to be half baked and unexplored. If those were taken into consideration prior to its release, it would have been a really good series from the streaming giant. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Black Knight on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one. And for the timing, we are signing off. I'm going to so you want to become a delivery man and I'll be back.